Hello all, this is Joop Smit and a video of how I cleaned out my Mercedes 300D diesel tank. This was after the engine was rebuilt and one or two uh, adaptations. Here I'm just uh, taking off the fuel line of the fuel pump. As you can see in the background that uh, cylinder with the uh, blue tape on it is a high pressure fuel pump. And I'm going to pump the tank clean uh, or empty with that and then I'll empty it more from that from uh, the bottom. Next I jacked up the car. Now this is, this is obviously not a difficult part, but let me show you one thing I've learned with any car I've worked on. Now bear in mind I'm not a professional mechanic, I'm a trained, uh, well a trained automotive teacher, uh, that was what I uh, did and taught basically for my whole professional life, is I put another jack stand under that for in case that uh, the car rolls or it comes off the, the jack. These Mercedes jacks are amazing, you, uh, you yeah, they're, they're really tough. Then I went under the car, um, this is as much as I could film with one hand and the cell phone, loosening up the filter so just on top of my hand you will see there is the tank filter and i'm taking off the line now make sure you have a bucket uh, bucket under that because the diesel that is left in the tank will come out there um, yeah and wear dirty clothes you can see i i wore dirty clothes as well When that line comes off, you'll see it comes off pretty easily because I had replaced it before. Uh, if yours is really, really old, I would just suggest using a carpet knife or something to cut that line off and replace it. Uh, these rubber lines get really, really hard, really hard uh, and stiff over years. And this one came off pretty easy just because it's a new one. This is to get to the fuel sender unit. Uh, to get to the fuel sender unit, you have to take off the emergency cabinet. You can see the screws are already loose. I had loosened it before. And then from the inside behind the back seats, when you lift that up, you will get to the wiring on top of the fuel sender unit. Oh. Back in the boot, or the trunk if you're in America, you have to remove that plate now. Uh, it's held down with, uh, with screws or bolts depending on how it's been worked on before. Uh, that little device that with the little bubbles is the, uh, the vacuum uh, bladder, that's what I call it. So that's kind of a storage place for the vacuum. It does leak out overnight and then you get to these 13 millimeter bolts that holds the tank in. Uh, just pointing to them there now and taking them off. On the other side of the tank you have the return and uh, the return and also the vacuum bleed. I, th I suppose there's other names for it as well uh, but it's important that these two come off as well and uh, make sure those lines are clean because if the vacuum uh, relief valve there's a valve on one of those lines if that thing is blocked your tank will draw a vacuum and your diesel car will stop eventually until you open up the tank cap and you'll have this this sucking sound going and you'll know that the tank has been vacuumed uh, when those lines are clogged
here is that vacuum bladder again uh, it's held on by a screw or, or a nut uh, next to the body here it was held on with a uh, with a rivet so I had to drill that out previously just pulls out on the side you can pull out the vacuum hoses and you can hear the, the vacuum release now there's a massive vacuum leak but anyway the car's not running in anyway And right about there the tank should be able to come out right wrong Mercedes engineered these cars well so what I found here in that is that it is probably better to remove the internal tank filter before pulling it out here because the spaces are really tight even for a 1979 machine well there eventually I got it out and uh, had to pull really hard to get it out out of the boot and uh, there she is now to get that full sender unit out usually I would use a 46 millimeter um, socket but those are really expensive where I come from so I just got one of these and lightly tapped it until that uh, that seal came loose and then turned it by hand and here she comes now for the fuel sender unit with this one you have to be much more careful uh, because you'll see when it comes out this it is sensitive and though yes I, I did knock it really hard but it just knock it loose nothing damaged when I uh, took it out it was just to loosen it it has been in there for more than 40 years and uh, then I turned it by hand further Now here's a surprise, there are two tanks, <laughs> let me show you why. We were fortunate at that time to have uh, one of these and if you've watched my other videos you would have probably picked it up by now and one of these. Sadly in the meantime the 300D has been sold to fund a, uh, a trip I took which I'll post another video uh, of uh, at another time but decided well you know if we're going to do one we might just as well do two now look at this this thing is put on there oh. with putty bloody hell
Some previous guy puttied this thing on when he couldn't get the unit loose and had cut it completely out. This is not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now when I remove this 240D's in-tank filter, just see the difference between the two. Because in the 300 I had run a product Look at that. I had run a product to clean out the tank, which I did not do with the 240D. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll give a name to the of, of the project of the product later. Uh, but what a brilliant product! Just look at the difference, and the 240D reminding you that the tank has been taken out before, and the 300 not, but. The uh, I had run a diesel cleaning tank cleaning uh, product uh, in there, uh, let's say about a year ago. This was the next day, and I took it up to the uh, workshop side and uh, pressure cleaned both tanks with a water based engine cleaner. I'm not going to say too much, I'm just gonna have you enjoyed this part or if you want to skip it you can just skip ahead a bit uh, to where I started fixing the 240s D the 240 D's tank and that uh, fuel sender unit that was uh, that was broken I'll also show the um, I'll also show the uh, uh, the way I cleaned the fuel sender units Also a quick side note, it's really important to wear some uh, breathing protection if you're working with a high pressure. I'm working at 6 bar here uh, and that uh, engine clean is really caustic. You don't want that stuff in your lungs so wear, wear your little mask.
Now this was funny, but trying to get the tank tied to the fence <laughs> so it can dry out completely. Obviously you don't want any water in your tank uh, once it's leaned out.
this is as much as I could get the phone uh, into the 240D's tank which was widely opened with the cut obviously and my uh, son just curious in the background These fuel sender units at the bottom have a little screw to keep the bottom on and keep in mind, you'll see it in a moment, there is a very thin wire inside and the 240Ds, that one was broken off and I had to repair and resolder that. But that's just to clean it out to give it a more, um, more accurate reading so it doesn't jump so much and I used brake cleaner as well over here probably should have wear some, worn some gloves as well but you know this is Africa so uh, we tend to ignore stuff like that Here's another tip, get yourself one of these bowls, it's a magnetic bowl and really keeps nuts and bolts together when you're stripping parts. This is the 300D's fuel sender unit and this black part here is a float and then that rides on the shaft in the middle, those two little wires are the resistance wires that triggers your meter uh, in the cabin and then there's, there's kind of a little switch I don't know if I could show that to you too well that turns on the reserve light you'll see in a moment uh, the difference between this one which is the 240D and this one I'm opening up now which is the sorry the, this one is the 240D that hasn't been treated with uh, with a diesel tank cleaner product Now for those two products I said I used in the tank, the one is Liqui Moly Diesel Purge uh, and you can see some of Kent Bergsma's videos on how to do that, that is Mercedes Source channel on YouTube, he shows you how to do the diesel purge and the other one was also a Liqui Moly product, I'm not paid by them to say this, it's just products I really like um, and that was also the diesel tank cleaner um, or inject the cleaner which you put in the tank and it really cleans out the tank but it does clog the pre-filter so you'll have to replace the pre-filter after you've done that so liquid molly products are some of my favorite products when it comes to diesels and I really uh, support that product not that they pay me it's just a product I really like I had left the both the in-tank fuel filters in uh, engine cleaner overnight and uh, had just planned to clean them up the next morning. You can see the one on the left is the 240D which was really gunked up but now I'm just using some brake and parts cleaner to clean it up some, uh, some more with using a brush as well.
Oh now here is the part which I ended up not filming even everything because getting that that uh, fuel sender unit welded back on was was a serious problem uh, and I just kind of lost hope <laughs> in filming it all and you know knowing that my welding skills aren't that well I probably should have sent it away but of course we live on a farm you know out of town so I had to make do uh, with what I had but anyway the tank is back in the car today and it works quite fine um, and it is sealed up uh, but uh, I just couldn't believe that the previous guys who worked in the, on the tank just uh, cut it out and put it back with the uh, you know ceiling putty which was brittle and stuff so every time you filled up the tank it would just overflow into the into the boot of the car it was quite funny but uh, today it's repaired You can see I just tacked welded there to prevent that o-ring there from melting and then when I could remove the fuel sender unit from that piece of metal then I could uh, start tack welding it up which I battled with eventually but eventually I got it right. Now after much cursing and cussing um, I got the 240D tank welded up again and replaced and here I uh, tried something else um, which still works. I, the blue hose is, um, uh, is it a nylon hose? I tried using a nylon piece of hose instead of rubber to see how it would hold up to the diesel and it's still doing fine. Uh, it doesn't actually leak, although you have to clamp it a bit harder because it is, is a bit of a harder material to use. After the tanks are dried, uh, putting them back is exactly the reverse of taking them out. And uh, now for the sad part. Cheerio. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the 300D has been sold, luckily to a young chap who, uh, has uh, started to love that car and care for it furthermore I needed to fund a trip uh, which I will show you more of in the next video uh, but thank you for watching this one and thank you for loving this 300D with me I'm Joop Smit and I'll see you in the next video